The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew, beginning at verse Matthew 23, beginning at verse 34. Glory to Christ our Savior. Jesus said, I sent you prophets, sages, and scribes, some of whom you will kill and crucify and some you will flog in your synagogues and pursue them from town to town so that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed on the earth from the blood of the righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, son of Barahiah, whom you murdered between the sanctuary and the altar. Truly, I tell you, all this will come upon this generation Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent in it. How often I desire to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wing, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you, desolate, for I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ, O Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. I speak in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we celebrate Saint Stephen first martyr deacon in the book of the acts of the apostles stephen is described as one of the seven deacons whose job it was to care for the widows in the early church of jerusalem This says something of Stephen. He must have been a man of great compassion. Because some of the widows in the early church felt neglected. And so seven deacons were chosen to attend to their affairs deacon stephen one of them he was a masterful speaker and his eloquent speech before the sanhedrin the religious council in which he shows uh, well he rehashed the whole history of the Hebrew people and how Jesus came to redeem Jesus came as the long-awaited Messiah. And how, all, and how all should hear the good news of Jesus Christ.
It is interesting that Steve, who was chosen to be deacon, whose job it was to serve, became so famous in his address to the, to the Sanhedrin. His passion for Jesus. His passion for the new way led him to be on the opposite side of the religious leaders. And you heard in the text from the Acts of the Apostles, when Stephen spoke, he spoke directly, cutting the hearts of those who were listening. And when it became too hard for them to digest, they covered their ears. And they rushed that season at Stephen like a mob, arrested him, determined to put him to death. St. Luke's description of Stephen, and you, will, you know that St. Luke is the writer of the Acts of the Apostles. His description of Stephen bears direct parallels to that of Jesus. So Luke wants to present Stephen to us as one who was close to the heart and mind of Jesus. You will see there, in Stephen's own life, there was uh, the passion, the trial, and execution of, Jesus, of Stephen, just as Jesus. In the text, Stephen was filled with the Holy Spirit, just as Jesus. In the text, Stephen had the vision of the Son of God standing at God's right hand, just as Jesus had promised he would. At his death, he commended his spirit to Jesus, imitating Jesus commending his spirit to the Father. Then he knelt, just as Jesus did in Gethsemane, asking forgiveness for his persecutors. As we celebrate this morning the feast of Saint Stephen, there are two things that stand out in the story of Stephen for me, and I share them with you. One, as I reflected on the arrest, I can't even say trial, okay, as I reflected on the arrest of Stephen, and as Rev says, his presentation before the kangaroo court, which is the Sanhedrin, if it is the religious body, His stoning, cruel form of death, the thought came to me that as Stephen lay there on the ground, dying, 
there was a young man who stood by. And I'll tell you the thought that came to me. Yes, he was the Don. He stood by, watching Stephen die. And those who stoned Stephen paid great respect to him. Granted, nowhere in the scripture it is said that this young man who stood by watching threw a stone. And then cloaks were thrown at his feet. Respect. And I want to believe that it is at that moment, no, this is not in the scriptures, but as I read and I reflected on it, I want to believe that it was at that moment at Stephen's stoning, Stephen's death, and the cloaks, robes thrown at his feet, that his conversion began. For you see, my brothers and sisters, God uses even the most cruel event to change hardened hearts and minds. And I want to believe that as you watch this man of God follower of the way one who was fearless in the proclamation of the gospel lay there dying uttering still words that touch the hearts and minds of those around this young man Saul by name was moved when Stephen said I see the son of man standing at the right hand of God something happened And later, when he heard the voice of the Son of God, his life was changed completely. There are sometimes events that touch us. Sometimes there are events that move us when we least think about them. I think I've told you this story already. But as a young man, I remembered the open Bible church coming to my community for the first time to have crusade. My friends and I would visit, visit, not attend, the place of the crusade only to give trouble until the minister one night was fed up with us. And he uttered a word of rebuke. That changed my mind. I'm not talking about conversion, no. That changed my mind and changed my ways as it related to the crusade.
God uses every event, every opportunity to reach our hearts. The second thing I want to share with you out of the text as I reflected on it is that as Stephen was dying and he had that vision in which he saw Jesus standing, the passage says, at God's right hand. It dawned on me that the standard phrase is sitting at God's right hand. Nowhere else do we read of the Son standing at God's right hand, apart from in this text. So, Stephen, in his vision, saw the Son of Man, the Messiah, the Redeemer, standing at the right hand of God. And I thought about it. Could it be that Jesus was standing, getting ready to welcome Stephen into heaven, welcoming him home? Could it be that Jesus was standing, observing in a particular way all that was happening and recalling his own passion and death? And when I gave it some thought, it came to me that in our own challenges, in our own difficulties, in our own hard times in our lives, Jesus is up on his feet, standing and talking and taking notice, waiting to lend a helping hand. Jesus was standing at the right hand of the Father. And so when you or when I am in trouble, He stands ready. Ready to make intercession for us. He stands ready to assist. He stands ready to lead us and to guide us. When we are bowed down, He stands ready to lift us up. When we become helpless, Jesus stands, standing with those who have come to our own assistance, guiding hands that may attend to us in our weakness, in our sickness, guiding minds to help us to find remedies, guiding hands that effect surgery on our weakened and feeble bodies. Jesus standing to bring wholeness and to bring life. As Stephen breathed his last breath, Jesus stood at the right hand of God, watching, waiting to welcome him. And Stephen, not wanting to go in anger, 
closed his eyes and like Jesus asked for forgiveness for those who persecuted and stoned him. Stephen over and over sought to imitate Christ in every area of his life, in good times and the bad times. What a great example for us. What a great example for us. Can we then, like Stephen, imitate Christ? Utter his words. Do his actions. And even in the most difficult of circumstances, see the Lord standing with us. Stephen died. The first martyr of the church. And today, we remember St. Stephen, deacon and martyr. May we ever seek to be more and more like Stephen. We pray for those congregations and ministers who serve in churches dedicated to Stephen. Let us pray. We'll be guided by Form D, page 111. Heavenly Father's promise through our Lord Jesus Christ to hear us when we pray in faith. Let us therefore pray for the church and we pray for the world. Let us offer our thanksgiving to God for God's goodness. We pray for the church of God in every place, especially for this diocese. For our bishops, and all the people of God, strengthen your church to carry forward the work of Christ. We pray for our country, particularly at this time for celebration of our emancipation and independence. Remember particular countries of the world where freedom is curtailed. Remember those places 
that have been torn by strife, by war. We pray for all peoples in their various callings. We pray for our own community and its surrounding. Pray that peace may prevail. Pray that we may work together for the building up of our communities. We pray for this parish and especially for the missions as they struggle to continue to offer ministry in the place where they are. We pray for our families. And here we remember all family members that are torn because of strife. those who have been affected by sudden illness or prolonged illness of a member or others. We pray for our friends and all who live and work with us. We pray for the poor. Lord, we offer ourselves that their needs may be attended by us and through us. We pray for those who are sick and ask that you work through the hands of those who attend to them. That they may attend with love and with patience. We pray for the unemployed and the unemployable. The handicapped. All who have requested our prayers. Especially remember today, Milton Mason. You know his needs, Lord. You know why he asks the prayers of the church. Strengthen and keep him in his illness. Pray for all others who seek the prayers of the church in their time of trouble. We commemorate the departed. That with all who belong to the communion of saints, living and departed, we may ever rejoice in the blessed assurance of the hope which has been won for us through Jesus Christ, as we remember particularly Stephen, Deacon, and Martha. We commend all people to your unfailing love, that in them your will may be fulfilled. And we rejoice at the faithful witness of your saints in every age, praying that we may share with them in your eternal kingdom. Lord, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ.